I work and live in the rural Midwest outdoors. There are things that live out here with me. I'll start this off by saying I grew up completely, 100% adamant that the paranormal isn't real. It can all be rationalized, and that people who believed in it haven't thought about it hard enough. I've had paranormal events that have happened in my life recently that have completely changed my mind. I live in the Midwest. I live on a small rural lot between a cornfield and a small forest, in a camper. I've lived in this county my entire life. I know the entire county like the back of my hand. This being said, I've come to the conclusion that my experiences around the rural and wooded parts of this county are crawlers. I'm 100% sure of it. I've had many encounters, actually. None back to back, but they happen frequently. There is a forest slash park in the middle of the town I always hated at night since I was little. As I got older, my cousin and I thought getting scared was really fun. We'd go there at night on purpose, but never lasted long. I always felt like I was being watched. This, on top of urban legends of people going missing here at night, made me feel really uneasy. Fast forward to a few years ago, I got married and I'm settling into life as a husband. I'd take my large all-black German Shepherd Fenrir on walks with me at night. I always walk towards the park, but I usually don't enter into it. The first time something weird happened was five years ago. I was walking Fenrir, and the woods to the front and to the right of me, to the left and behind me was a neighborhood edge and a small playground, went silent. My dog started acting super anxious. He's usually a very stoic and quiet dog. He's 120 low bees and built like a tank, looks very intimidating and he knows it. I heard rustling in the woods following me, and I felt like I was being stalked. I ran home and that's the end of the first encounter. I had a few more encounters like that, but last year things really amped up. I was on a walk around 11.30 p.m. with Fenrir, my wife, and our little newer dog, Booger. He's a terrier chi mix. We are walking down the same path, and about three blocks away from the woods, four or so deer are sprinting out of the trees into the street, towards us, and they seem terrified. Then I hear what I can only describe as what sounded like a human trying to mimic the sounds of a monkey. I thought it was silly until recently, when I read that other guy's story who heard the same fucking thing. Once we get up to the woods and are walking parallel, we can clearly see two reflective eyes and a silhouette staring us down from the tree line. We also heard a deep growl, and then like a hissing sound. But it wasn't super high-pitched or anything. Both our dogs acknowledged this as well. Finn stared and Booger growled a bit. I made a Facebook post on the community's Facebook group, and other people told similar stories around town. Around this time, I got a job as a tour guide, you know, maintenance for rail explorers. I am working there again this year as well. We start April 1st. Basically, they take unused or tour-specific railroad sections that aren't used federally, and they have these pedal carts with motor assist on them you can use to explore the tracks. It's super cool and super fun. The one I work at is like five minutes from where I live, and it goes through the woods in an inaccessible part of the county unless you float down the river and hike up steep, loose dirt hills. You go under one old car bridge, and you go over two multi-hundred-foot length old train bridges. The first one is larger and taller, and it's about 150 feet off the ground above the forest. The second goes over the river. About six months into the job and it's fall. We work until midnight sometimes with the last tour leaving around 9 p.m. That means the last tour for the last two months of the year are in complete darkness. The way that job operates is with six employees. Four get on the lead bike, and two get on the rear bike. From the lead bike, we drop off one person at the busy intersection so they can flag traffic and one person gets dropped off at the large train bridge that goes over the woods. The person at the bridge gives a short safety speech to the customers who stop and go one at a time over the bridge. The employee carts are much faster than the customer ones. We all have walkie-talkies, and we usually have these battery-powered floodlights on stands we use so the customers can see us, and light up safety vests. On one particular night, we were behind by 20 or so minutes. Instead of leaving the depot at sunset, we were leaving at dusk. I was stationed at the high bridge. By the time we reached the bridge, it was pitch black aside from the stars providing a little light. 
my co-workers dropped me off and waited with me until the first customer arrived. I gave the little speech to that first card of four and chatted with them a little bit. I was trying to buy some time and wait for the next customer cart so there wasn't a massive gap for my co-workers who have to flip the bikes around. After a few minutes, I let these customers leave, and I was alone. I was alone for 20 minutes. I used the radio so many times, but it was static for everybody. Don't skip this. One of the only times we've ever had an issue like that as well. I kept seeing movement in the tree line. I kept hearing fast footsteps all around me in every direction. I had the floodlight on above my head, so everyone and everything could see me, but I couldn't see shit. I turned off the floodlight and used my personal flashlight. I kept seeing quick glimpses of pale skin moving quickly, but right when I started seeing stuff I could hear the next customer cart coming close, so I turned the light back on and waited for them to come around the corner. When they pulled up I noticed they had a little boy with them and he's scared of the dark. I'm terrified at this point, but have to act appropriate. Even more so because of this boy, I do not want to scare him. As I'm finishing my speech, I hear movement right behind me and say, Jesus f***ing Christ, and spin around with my flashlight on instinct. Poor kid. I told them it was probably just a deer, and they are good to go across the bridge. That same night, the person stationed at the intersection... This isn't like an in-town intersection, it's very rural. It's right next to a massive cornfield. He's Native American and was very in tune with his culture. He told me privately a few weeks later that he heard rustling in the cornfield, and whatever was out there was whispering his name and trying to get him into the field. He was also without communication for those 20 minutes, but he wasn't in the woods, and could see a lot better than me. Another time, me and that same co-worker were headed back on the front cart, we were away ahead so we stopped the cart in the middle of the high bridge. It sounds scary, I am a bit afraid of heights, and this bridge has massive gaps between the planks you could fit through. But after doing it so often you get used to it. It was a clear night and we were watching the stars and having small talk. Then it goes silent. We are a hundred and so feet in the air above the woods, we can hear for miles. The dogs barking across the river two miles away can be heard without even seeing the houses. We hear what sounds like a human mimicking a monkey noise, and we hear growling. He looks at me, completely seriously, and tells me in a stern tone that we need to get out of here right now. I drive the heck out of there. He ended up moving states to Nevada shortly after this. A few other things happened here and there and to co-workers as well. Each of my co-workers have at least one story. I'm only sharing mine in this post, otherwise it'd be too long. A few months go by and it's late fall, around the middle of November. I drive through that park in town a lot when I just want to go for a drive. I had my dog Fenrir with me and it's around 2am. I can't sleep so I'm listening to a Melvin CD and driving leisurely through the park. As soon as I get past the entrance gates I feel really uneasy and weird. I'm not easily scared. Going to that park at night makes me feel a primal fear. It's beyond fight or flight. I have never felt that way in my life anywhere else. Ever. And I feel it every time I'm there. I'm driving through the park and I've rolled the windows up a lot more. Fenrir can still poke his head out but can't leap out. As I go deeper into the woods I feel worse and worse. I decided not to turn around because I'm already past the halfway point. Turning around would make me stay in the woods longer. I started speeding where there weren't turns I couldn't see around. I round the last corner, and what I saw made me have nightmares for months. There was a pale, skinny humanoid. Tall and lanky, not quite human. Fucking crawling on its hands and feet, but it was crawling fast as fuck. 20 miles per hour type shit. We don't have bears here. The only animal that size are large humans and deer. That wasn't a deer. It went from my right, crossed the street, and went into the tree line. Fenrir saw it too. He doesn't bark at animals. Not even other dogs. He went ballistic. He was trying to force himself out of the small gap in the window, nearly foaming at the mouth and snarling. He never, ever acts like that. I'm a certified dog trainer, and I've raised him from birth. Most recently, I've become obsessed with this park. 
I've walked there at night from my camper to the park with Fenrir. I'll never do it again. I didn't see a figure this time. As I was entering the park, a massive owl flew by my head so close I could have smacked it mid-flight. This made me feel weird for some reason. As soon as I get into the park, I feel extremely weird, anxious, and nauseous. I walk a few hundred yards to the only streetlight in the entire park, and I turn around and face the woods. Me and Fenrir stand there, frozen, for like ten minutes. The silence was deafening. Any time I heard anything, I'd jump. Finn was anxious as hell, too. He kept staring into a certain spot in the woods a ways off. I swear I saw eyes in there every once in a while. I built up the courage to walk out, and I haven't gone back since. It'll be interesting to see what happens at my job this year. I wanted to add that the county I live in is packed full of abandoned mines. Hundreds of them. So, this isn't something I witnessed. I was told this story by one of the men who allegedly saw it. For context, this guy had run with some questionable crowds and did what jobs he had to to make money at times. If you get my drift. So he has a lot of stories. I mostly consider this a tall tale, but there is still enough of it that makes me wonder what if. According to him, we'll call him Zed for the sake of the story. He had been finishing up some work down in Louisiana back in the late 1990s with his buddy and had a few days to kill, namely to get some fishing and hunting in, albeit out of season. One of the guys they had worked with gave them directions to a spot way back in the swamps and marshes, or the bayou, as it's more commonly called. They could do that without risking being caught by fish and game agents. He said one of the best things about this spot was there were, oddly enough, never any alligators there. Bit of a red flag, that one. Anyways, one fine morning they set out in their boat before the sun was up, navigating their way through the swamps. From what he described, this was a section that was close to the Mississippi border. Routes used by smugglers to move various products across state lines. They finally arrived at the spot after a few hours, and some detours, their way of saying they didn't get lost. Turned off the motor on their boat, and started fishing. The trees were just thick enough to prevent you from being seen from overhead, and they were essentially in a huge inlet that was somewhat sheltered from the rest of the bayou, and had the start of solid land along two sides of it. By solid land that also meant you had to walk across 10 to 15 feet of muck that could suck your boots off before you got to solid ground. So according to Zed, the day was progressing, and fishing wasn't going great, but they still had beer so they weren't inclined to go anywhere. They both noted that as the guy had said, there were no alligators. Normally you could spot them lurking around or sunning themselves, but they were just utterly gone from the spot, as were most of the big fish it seemed. It was at this point they observed a herd of feral hogs emerge from the undergrowth on one side of the lagoon and make their way to the muck that was described before and commenced to start rolling and rooting in it to their heart's content. Zed and his buddy slowly angled their boat closer, as they had sidearms with them, and certainly had no issues with getting wild pork instead of fish if the opportunity was there. The hogs were leery but not afraid, keeping the humans in their line of sight as they frolicked. Zed saw they had no real way to get to a hog if they shot it there, so they just floated along and watched for a good opportunity but instead they saw something else entirely. According to Zed, that's when they saw the mud start to move. He knew instantly it wasn't an alligator, as an alligator would be flailing around in the mud trying to reach the hogs, and whatever this thing was, it was covered in mud. The only way he could describe it was something was pushing its way through the muck like a mostly submerged bulldozer, creeping up on the pigs. They watched as it slowly approached a cluster of hogs who had noticed the movement, but seemed more curious about what it was than afraid. One of them, a pig that Zed estimated was between 150 to 175 pounds, was the furthest out in the muck and made the mistake of attempting to sniff at whatever the intruder was. Zed said that quicker than they could react, something lunged out from the thing and attached to the pig's head and face. As the pig thrashed and tried to jump back, letting out the most blood-curdling scream they'd ever heard, the thing was hauled partially out of the muck and came into better view. Zed realized it was an alligator-snapping turtle, with proportions he had never heard of. 
He's seen the one they keep at Bass Pro Shop, that got big enough that it cracked its tank and had to get a new one, and he said that was like comparing a chihuahua to a pit bull. It was still partially obscured by the muck that was covering it, but Zed swore its shell had to be at least the size of the hood from a Volkswagen Beetle. He was an extreme car enthusiast, so he knew his vehicles. His best guess on its weight was it was well over 500 pounds, and was now backing up into deeper water dragging the pig with it. Zed said from what they could see, the turtle's head was so big that it was able to fit its jaws partially around the pig's skull, and its beak was now essentially acting as a meat hook. Apparently it was about a 30 second fight to drag the pig out into the lagoon, but Zed said it was clear the pig never had a chance. The turtle dragged it out into the water, and the pig made one last desperate attempt to break free. Apparently hearing something screaming underwater one last time is as unnerving as you'd imagine, and Hollywood doesn't get the sound right. It then just went absolutely quiet after that. According to Zed, he and his buddy sat there for a minute processing what they had just seen, and except for the froth on top of the water, and the stirred up mud there was no sign anything had just happened. The other hogs had fled as soon as their comrade was attacked, and except for some bugs, it was almost completely silent. They couldn't say why, but Zed said they booked it out of there, that something was off and it felt wrong to be there. It wasn't like they could go to fish and game and describe what they saw, but they did fill in their acquaintance on why there were no alligators in that area. As far as Zed knew, nobody else has ever seen this colossal turtle and came forward to talk about it. But Zed said that it was big enough that if it caught a person unaware, it could easily overpower and kill a human the same way it did that pig. Again, this is how the story was told to me. It's not my story, and I'm inclined to mostly believe it's a tall tale, or an exaggerated one. But it does highlight that you don't need something as fanciful as a skunk ape, or Bigfoot, to be nervous about what might be lurking out of sight. This happened around 10 years ago. My friend Craig and I made plans to go hang out with our friend Jeremy and his new girlfriend. Neither of us had to work the next day. So we grabbed some beers and made our way to Jeremy's mom's apartment complex, where Jir was temporarily staying. When we got there, we went out into the woods behind the apartment complex to drink. This wasn't just a little patch of trees, but a good-sized patch of forest. For context, this was in New York State. It was a nice fall day, late afternoon, and the sun was still out. We finished the beers and decided to go get more. So we went to the store and got some more beer, headed back to the apartments and entered the woods. This was autumn, and the light outside was right at that stage where it started to fade very quickly. We underestimated how dark it would be once we were in the woods, and how fast the light was fading away. We planned on making a fire, but didn't really count on it being so dark when we got back. So we were walking into this sort of clearing area, from where we could choose to head off in a few different directions. We were having a good time, laughing, talking, but something not too far in the distance caught my eye. It was too dark to tell, but I swear I could see a very large figure. No, that was too big. It was probably a tree or just my eyes messing with me. So as Jeremy was gabbing in the background, I asked Craig as an aside if he could see something standing up ahead, and he was like, nah, where? Oh wait, there. Oh shit. We were still walking, and it was becoming clear I wasn't seeing things. There was a very large person standing in the forest up ahead, apparently facing us. So I tried to get Jeremy's attention without cluing the big guy in that we had noticed him, just in case something sketchy was going on, which I got the serious feeling there was. We told Jeremy there was a person up ahead, but Jeremy was in a jovial, no-chill state, and he exclaimed, Holy shit, is that Bigfoot? We humored him and laughed, but it was clear to Craig and I that this was actually creepy, and probably not a safe situation, and it was clear that Jeremy was not understanding that. It was hard to communicate the pacing of our approach to the guy, but essentially we had gotten too close not to acknowledge him, partially because it took us a moment to get Jeremy's attention, and partially because we weren't trying to just turn around and run like we were scared. There were four of us, and one of him, after all. But this was a big guy, not supernaturally big or anything, 
and not like he was jacked or anything like that. Just a naturally gigantic dude, very tall and heavy without being particularly fat. And he was just standing there, in the middle of the forest, in the dark, alone. So as we approached this guy and just sort of said hello, Jeremy, the absolute fool that he was, got way too close into this guy's personal space as he enthusiastically told him about how scary he looked standing in the woods alone. We thought you were an alien or something, bro. I thought you were gonna jump up and boo. Jeremy mimed an extra set of teeth coming out of his mouth like a xenomorph from the Alien vs. Predator movies, all up in this guy's face. To be clear, Jeremy was not trying to be intimidating or a jerk in any way. He was trying to be friendly and joking around with this guy, but he was literally leaning into this dude and practically sticking his hands in his face with his impression of an alien. Did I mention Jeremy was kind of a moron? Love you, Jeremy, but you were kind of a moron. And Jeremy's poor girlfriend, who was a few years younger than us and very shy, was clearly terrified, to which Jer was also oblivious. So Craig and I were both standing there, kind of trying to brainstorm a way out of this situation. Jeremy was clearly too dense to get it if we said that we had to go. He would be like, What? Aren't we having a fire? And we were trying to seem confident and in control of the situation. Big guy said, Oh, you guys are drinking? I got some drinks too. And he walked over to the tree line where he had a bag lying beside a tree. He reached in the bag, and while he grabbed a beer with one hand, he sort of sneakily pulled something else out with his other hand and placed it into his hoodie pocket. I was convinced it was a knife or a gun, probably a knife, in all honesty. He then reapproached us and cracked open his beer. I glanced around casually, and then I noticed something else. Somebody else was out there. There was someone moving along the tree line to our left, a relatively good distance away, but somebody else was there, and they were circling around as if to come up behind us. Fuck this. I needed to leave. Now. So I said, Well, I gotta work in the morning, and Craig's driving me home, so we gotta get out of here. Jeremy, in his infinite wisdom, replied, What? You said you didn't have to work tomorrow. I facepalmed so hard on the inside. No, Jeremy, you must have misheard me. I said I do have to work tomorrow. And Jeremy, proving there was no end to his wisdom, said, All right, guys. Well, it was nice hanging with you. Get home safe. He wasn't leaving the woods with us. Craig and I started walking away, and I told him about the other person circling to get behind us, and that we needed to move. We started trying to brainstorm a way to get Jeremy and his girlfriend out of there, and decided to call him and tell him that his mom was out in the parking lot looking for him. Jeremy was terrified of his mom, Craig explained to me, and this should work. Because we clearly couldn't just call him and tell him the situation was not safe without him blurting out. This guy isn't sketchy, I feel totally safe. Jeremy was very mad at us for lying about his mom. I think his girlfriend appreciated it though. I'm not sure what was going on there that night. I've talked to several people about it over the years, and there are a few different ideas. Did they know we were coming back? Were they waiting for us? Or did we stumble into something we weren't meant to? Almost everyone I tell about this says, you guys just accidentally interrupted a drug deal. But something about that just doesn't seem right. Who does a drug deal in the middle of the woods at night? I don't know. Very possibly just a homeless dude with no ill intention, and another homeless dude with no ill intention. But it was a very creepy and scary situation. Encounter in the Spanish Mountains I am from Madrid, Spain. My family is from a small mountain city. We are all familiar with mountains. Even though I live in Madrid, I always go to hike in the mountain range surrounding Madrid. I would not consider us to be very superstitious and or believe strongly in supernatural events, although I am a huge fan of folklore. This story happened in summer. Back when I was 14 years old, my mother took me and my brother for a week-long trip to a mountain range in the southeast of Spain, close to the old town of Rio Par, Viejo. We had already spent half of the week going on multiple hikes, and we visited beautiful lakes where me and my brother would swim despite them being super cold. Overall, we had already had a lot of fun and we were enjoying our small family trip so far. 
One day, while it was very sunny and warm, we went on a hike again to this kind of abandoned trail which some of the locals of the village had recommended. It was not accessible by car and there was no phone service. We could not care less, since we loved to spend time in nature, and we would just spend our time walking and talking instead of being on our phones. We found a crystal clear lake, with beautiful turquoise greenish water, and lots of water vegetation in it. My brother and I immediately jumped in, and afterwards we had picnic for lunch. So far, so good. Suddenly, while we were enjoying our ham sandwiches, we heard a loud scream. It was very high-pitched and just overall scary. Considering the fact that we were next to the lake, in a small valley between tall mountains, we could hear it kind of echo. All three of us immediately looked at each other, startled. We were certainly not imagining anything. From what we could deduce, the sound came from the other side of the lake, in a very bushy area. The lake itself was not very big, and we decided to make our way around it to investigate. Because, although we had not seen anyone during the entire day out there, maybe someone was in danger or needed help. I cannot really specify what the scream sounded like. In hindsight, it was not your typical scream for help. But who knows what humans are capable of sounding like when in dire need of help, right? After a 20-minute walk, we were already getting to the entrance of the bushy area at the other side of the lake, all three of us approaching with our walking sticks in hand and in a cautious position. The first thing we noticed was an awful smell of rotting flesh. That, together with the scream earlier, made us feel a sense of dread. Normally you would feel welcome when helping someone out, but we did not feel welcome at all in this place. My instincts were telling me we should just backtrack our way out of there, while not losing sight of the bushy area. However, we could not shake the feeling we had to help if someone needed it, so we decided to proceed slowly. The joy and laughter we had at the other side of the lake were no more. Whatever was going on at this side of the lake, it felt wrong and ominous. I cannot talk on my brother or mother's behalf, but the hair on my arm stood on end. After making our way through the bush for ten minutes, we were finally reaching a clearing. During this whole time the sense of dread had continued, and the awful smell of rotting flesh had only increased. Finally, in the middle of the clearing we saw what had caused this smell. In what seemed to be the perfect middle of this small clearing, we found the dead corpse of a deer. Or at least, what remained from it. The limbs were removed from its torso and the head was half eaten. The thing is, the cadaver looked fairly fresh, as if it was killed that same day. However, the smell was still that of a rotting and decayed corpse. It did not make any sense. We checked for footprints or dung in the clearing but did not find anything. A logical explanation would be wolves, or even bears since we got both of them in rural Spain. However, the missing footprints and the way of how this deer was ripped apart made it seem almost unnatural. After we had checked the surroundings, we left as quickly as possible. On our way back, we did not stop to rest at the lake or anything. We just wanted to get out of there as quick as possible. When we were leaving the valley behind us, halfway up one of the surrounding mountains, we heard another scream, similar to the first one. However, this time we did not feel the urgency to check if someone needed help. Instead, we paced up our speed and not go back. Somewhere in the evening, when we finally had made it back to our village, we went for dinner at a small old bar in the picturesque town square. We talked to some of the elder people from the village about our experience with their abandoned trail. They told us that apparently, we had somewhere taken a wrong turn the trail, since it was not very clear and that this was the reason we ended up at the valley with the lake. They also told us that a few centuries back, during the Spanish Inquisition, the local townspeople had gone to that valley because a so-called witch lived there and set her house on fire, killing the poor woman. Since then, the locals never hiked close to the lake or its surroundings in the valley. A couple days later we left to go back home, but we have never been able to shake the feeling of dread we experienced that day. Again. We are not superstitious or big believers of the supernatural, but what happened on that day was definitely weird. This happened around 2021, and sometimes I still find it hard to grasp. 
For context, I now live in a different place, and along with most of my relatives, so I feel safer saying this on here. The reason I'm posting this is for people to learn and possibly caution themselves from my experience. I'd say the place I lived in was just pretty old. It wasn't densely populated nor empty. It had wooded areas around it. You could cycle to the mall, school, and other normal places, but you'd have to take a car to go to places like the hospital. I was basically in my last year of high school. Being an only child and a girl on top of that made my parents overprotective, and I was naturally more cautious than the rest of my friend group. I didn't really mind being that way though because I always thought that was the better option. So teenagers from school would have these outdoor get-togethers in the woods a few kilometers away from school. It was just common for people to lounge out and about, chilling till 3 a.m. or something. Including me, it was a group of four. They decided since it's our last year, we should probably drink together in the woods. Obviously looking back. Stupid fucking idea. But it wasn't unsafe and it wasn't deep in the woods either. There's a pretty clear trail and a small openish area where people would like get their dogs and whatnot. We planned to do it on a Thursday because my parents would be out and the rest would convince theirs that we were having a sleepover. Now we bought the alcohol and some other stuff to just chill out. There were no others that day because it was a weekday and quite chilly as well. It was pretty lively, you could see houses from the distance and people would be driving around and all, so naturally we felt safer. We walked on the trail for about one minute when I felt uneasy. I felt like we were being watched or something like that, and looked over to one of my friend. She looked a little distressed but we just shrugged it off. We walked only a few minutes more and found our spot. We started drinking and basically spent like an hour and a half gossiping and having those deep talks while being drunk. I didn't drink too much and neither did my other friend, we were just a little tipsy. Now we forgot about the brief weird feeling we had felt while walking until we heard something from the thick trees in front of us. Even though we were loud, we all heard it. It was this weird giggle. I got up from this tree log I was sitting on and just dragged my friends back a little. We had a fire going and two torches but still couldn't really see into that area. It wasn't that close to us. Think around four doors away if you placed them horizontally so the fact that we heard that laugh was just insane to me. I pointed the flash straight into the area and no one came out. I sat back down, and when I turned the flashlight off, there was a silhouette coming out. I switched on the flash to blind that person while my other friends did the same. We started yelling and getting ready to run when I saw the most horrifying sight of my life. It was this man who we'd never seen before. He had this plaster smile, and his hair was covered in dirt. He was pale and his eyes were almost like he wasn't looking at us but just in our general direction. I can't explain but just textbook creepy. We all ran for it. My very drunk friends even managed to snap out of it. We got to my house. I lived the closest to the place and said that we'd call the cops. We were shit scared of out parents, but it didn't matter. We called the cops. They found nothing. Word got out and people pretty much strayed away from the paths at nighttime. And a couple of the guys in our school managed to get their dads and all with guns to find the guy, but nothing ever came of it. Fast forward to a month later, we didn't talk about it much, and never did anything like that again. I got myself a pocket knife and pepper spray in case I ever needed it. I went home after school one day and was exhausted, so I decided to take a nap. My dad was at work and my mom was visiting her sister. I suddenly woke up to this weird sound. We had a single story house and the walls were thin. I locked all the doors, and even the windows out of habit. Still. Fearing for the worst, I locked my room door and kinda looked out my window. There was nothing. I grabbed a bat and my phone, heading out of my room. I looked at all the doors and everything was locked. There was this weird like shuffling sound outside my house, and I just looked through the window of my living room. I kid you not, it was the same dude from the woods. He was just outside walking in this erratic, eerie way, which just sent me into a spiral. He somehow saw me and started saying hi there very loudly. I called the police and after that, I told him to f**k off. Then he started saying my name, and all my friends' names. The police questioned him. He has no history of mental illness. He had no clinical disorder, and after enough torture he confessed to liking young women. He's in jail now, but will probably get out in a couple of years.